Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and this week we are at Trezo Vino. We're going to make a signature dish with their chef. But before doing that, we're going to spend a little time talking with their director of operations, Jeff Wiltfang. Thank you, first of all, for inviting us to your beautiful, beautiful restaurant. You're very welcome. Glad to have you. I'd like to talk some about the setting, the ambiance, the wine. You have it all here. What was the concept when you put together the restaurant? The, the concept is really about sharing. And it's really, a, the, the phrase that we like to use is Trezovino, where good taste is meant to be shared. Mm -hmm. It's very culinary driven. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, an opportunity, though, um, to surround Danny's incredible cuisine with the most incredible wine in Kansas City. Uh, the concept of our, around our wine list is really focused on wines that are really not that available to any other restaurant other than Trezzolini's wine list. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a which lot means of exclusive. Treasure, excuse me, which translate means to treasure of wine. Treasure of wine, and so that you take that very seriously. We take it very <laughs> seriously. Uh, we were the recipient of the Ingram's Magazine Silver Medal this year. Congratulations. Um, and we think that that is uh, attributed to the quality and the artisanship of, of the uh, wine choices that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, we don't have the biggest list in Kansas City, but we have a hand-selected list that is probably one of the most respected lists in the area. Well, congratulations on that. So the ambiance, how would you describe it to someone who hasn't been here? The Trezzovino is, is a really inviting space. Mm -hmm. It's beautifully appointed. Uh, our wine selection, we're certainly very proud of. Our chef is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. We're honored to have uh, Danny and his incredible team here. Uh, the menu selections are, we have a wide variety of menu selections. Uh, there's something for every palate. Uh, it's it's uh, interesting too how people take advantage of the menu. Uh, while it's a shareable concept, um, uh, there are still opportunities to have a very traditional meal with the salad and the mm -hmm. entree and dessert. Sure. But the majority of our guests really enjoy sharing a number of items. Uh, you see people becoming very comfortable uh, uh, dipping into uh, the same uh, the same entree uh, back and forth and over again and, and passing around but uh, it's a very comfortable atmosphere. It's almost the smaller plates or tapas or what, however you refer to them, I think is inviting. I know when I came here as a guest, uh, we were all sharing because there were so many wonderful flavors. And I should say there's a variety of price points on the menu. Absolutely. There really is something for for everyone. Absolutely, as, as well as the wine list. Uh, we have uh, a lot of great opportunities to try wines that are very affordable, as well as uh, a lot of exclusive wines that uh, are uh, very highly regarded and very highly highly esteemed. I think also your servers, I know when, again when we were here, were very helpful in um, making suggestions for pairings of wine with the food. Well, the wine pairing is kind of the topic of the day. We uh, have a pre-chef meeting on, on uh, before every before every dinner shift, mm -hmm. uh, and pairing is uh, is something that we discuss nightly uh, to make sure that our, our servers are very confident going to the table and it was evident. providing opportunities to pair uh, great food with incredible wine. Mm -hmm. But uh, above and beyond, it's really about the food. Our culinary team is fabulous. Uh, we're honored to have Chef Daniel White as our chef, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's a great place. We hope everyone has a chance to come and try Trezzolino. So, again, the star of the show here is the food. It's the food. It's the food. <laughs> so, in keeping with that, we're now going to talk to your executive chef, Daniel White, and then after that, we're going to go in into the kitchen and prepare a signature dish. Sounds great. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and this week we are in the kitchen at Trezo Vino with their executive chef, Daniel White. Daniel, thank you for inviting us into your kitchen. You're welcome. 
Uh, what are we going to fix today when we go into your kitchen? We will actually be preparing our short rib ravioli mm -hmm. with a kind of a mushroom sherry cream sauce. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that. But before we begin cooking, I thought I'd ask you a little bit about your journey to this profession. Okay. How'd you get here? Um, particularly here, uh, during high school, I found an interest in culinary arts. Mm -hmm. um, actually, at a job fair, mm -hmm. um, and then the chef there told me that okay. I should probably work in the field before I go to school. So I started at a that fine dining restaurant. That is such good advice for almost anything we do, and good for you for exploring it that way. Yeah, it, it definitely <laughs> showed me exactly what was coming. So no illusions. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then I actually enrolled in a vocational program mm -hmm. in high school as well. So that was a two-year program, kind of taught me the fundamentals and the basics of how to cook. Um, went back into the field for a couple more years, mm -hmm. um, then decided it was time to actually go to a culinary school. So I moved to Arizona by myself, mm -hmm. um, signed up Big for the Scottsdale step. Culinary Institute and got you. accepted. And, that's where it really all began. So you've had the professional training, which we can't stress enough. I mean, it's great on the job, but that professional piece is, I think, crucial to becoming an executive chef. Oh, nowadays, definitely. So, so I'm being told by chefs that when they go through this training, they had some unexpected pieces and parts to the training, like how you look and how you work. Yeah, you, you think I'm going to culinary school yeah. to, to learn how to cook, um, but a big portion of our school was professionalism. Um, and what I mean by that, it was every day when you came in, you had to have seams on your shirt, your nails had to be clipped, your shoes had to be cleaned, and it was to a point where if it wasn't, you got sent home. Now, we were doing six-week courses. If you got sent home three of those six weeks, Ooh. you had to retake the, uh, right. the course. It's right. three days of the six weeks. You know, there is the belief that the way we're dressed does affect how we pay attention, our attitude, and our really uh, availability to acquire information, if you will. So good for you and good for that school. So let's talk about you. You received professional training and then where did you go from there? Um, well, I was actually coming back to spend a little time with my family and mm -hmm. friends um, to where I would then go kind of study for a while under some great chefs. Um, on my journey back, I stopped and stayed in a, a little town in Utah, St. George, mm -hmm. um, and next door they had a cafe that was opening up and they didn't have a chef. Oh. So I walked in and applied and then got hired right then. Um, so I ended up staying there for almost six months and ran mm -hmm. the kitchen there, mm -hmm. um, developed their systems, got them going to where I felt comfortable and I could move on. Um, from there I came back home to spend home a little is Kansas time. Kansas City. Kansas City, yep. yes. Mm -hmm. um, again, to spend time with friends and family. Um, and then I actually got a job on the plaza at Grand Street and I met Great my kitchen. my now wife of three years mm -hmm. and we have two children and yep. pretty much landed here for a while now. So you've been here at Tres Ovino since... Since the day we opened, since yes. Since the day you opened in another uh, another piece of information to your credit and to the management here is that most of your staff has been there for that length of time oh, yes, as well. Yes, about 80% of my kitchen staff has been here since day one. So you've created the kind of environment where um, people want to stay and become committed to the work and to what you're doing here. So, what's your inspiration? I always ask this question. What's your inspiration in the kitchen each day? But it's hot in there and the pots and pans are heavy and you are on your feet all the time. What keeps you going? You know, I have a really kind of a mathematical mindset in my head, so it's what keeps me going on a day-to-day -day basis is doing the tasks that I do and maybe doing them in a different order, experimenting, mm -hmm. playing with ideas, um, and always the creativity. I open a window up every day um, from about two to four that I spend just doing some research and, and planning specials and creating food. I mean, it's really the organization, I think, is, is what I enjoy a lot, so, as much as the cooking. So, you, so the cooking, of course, and, and I know maintaining that you know, level of excellence that's on our plate when we come here. What is exciting about what you've just said is that you actually d devote a piece of each day to creativity. Correct. Yeah. So you always have to learn. You always have to um, push yourself and teach yourself, taking classes, things like that. And so you're looking for a new way to do something? You're looking for a new special or a new dish? Y yeah, a lot of times, and you can see it with the menu that I've created here, I will take really old recipes and try to mm. recreate them mm -hmm. and just modernize them a little bit. So a lot of the recipe cards I have at home might have come from my grandparents or my wife's grandparents. Oh, so some of these are personal recipes yes, as yes, well. Definitely. Oh, yes. that's excellent. That's excellent. So a combination of your history, 
personal history as well as what you've learned professionally and then picked up along the way. What chef inspired you the most? Can you say? I, yeah, I can actually. I think uh, there are two chefs that really mm -hmm. stand out. Um, one was Michael Peterson, who is a local chef. Actually, I've worked with Michael Peterson at Earring, Ponytail, and all. <laughs> and uh, when I was with the Barstow School, we had an organic farmer's market and chef series, and he used to come out and cook for us way back when there were no other organic markets, and he was amazing. Yeah, he's just very talented, very straightforward, mm -hmm. um, knows his good, food, knows good how for to run you a kitchen. For and, being exposed to that, yeah. So that, that, that's my primary focus. And then, you know, on the side, it, I do a lot of research and I watch a lot of videos and things like that. And there, there are many people out there that are kind of uncommon names, people you might not recognize, or someone like a Thomas Keller or something. Somebody you don't see on television all the time, but they're a great chef. So I Amazing spend a lot of time man. watching them mm -hmm. as well. Okay, well, we appreciate all the effort that you've put forth to create the value and the excellence that we find here at Tres Ovino. Um, what say you that we go into the kitchen and cook that signature dish? That sounds great. Okay, I think you should come with us. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and this week we are in the kitchen at Tres Ovino with their executive chef, Daniel White. Daniel, thank you for inviting us into your kitchen. You're welcome. Okay, chef, what are we gonna make today? We are actually making our short rib ravioli mm. with a mushroom sherry cream sauce. Mm, I think that's gonna be wonderful. I know we have a celebrity taster that's anxious, anxiously awaiting the opportunity to taste this. Well, what do we have here? We have mise, this is mise, what do you call mise? Mise en place. Yes, but what is the new term where have you mised or something? Have you heard you know, that? Yeah, it's kind of yeah, slang. It's we, slang. We, we stay with the mise en place We're here, gonna yes. stay with mise en place. And so our mise en place is here. This is actually fresh pasta that yes. I've made this morning. Yes. Um, contains yeah. egg yolks, a little bit of egg white, and flour and salt. And it's, okay, it looks divine. All right, what do we have here, chef? Okay, this will actually be the, the short rib filling, filling for the raviolis. So what I've done is I've taken the short ribs, I've aggressively seasoned them in a jerk seasoning, seared them, and then we braise them in the oven with blackberries and veal stock mm. for about two and a half hours. So the slow cook thing. Yes, makes them nice and tender. Okay, then once it's been, you can handle it, you chopped it up and what do I see in there along with the ribs? You see a little bit of fontina cheese and we also use some of that braising liquid to help bind it to make the ravioli firm. Intense, just layers of flavor. Okay, what else, Chef? These are just chopped shallots. Yes. Behind that, I have a kind of a trio of mushrooms. They are medium mushrooms, also known as button mushrooms. Yes. Portobellos and oyster mushrooms. Oh, oh, oysters are my favorite. Yes, they are. They're my favorite too. Here. Okay, this will be the cream that we will be using for the sauce. Okay. Um, a little bit of butter as well. Uh, okay. We will finish it with some shaved grana padana. Mm -hmm. And this is the leftover. We're going to roll some pasta here in a minute. And I take the leftovers and we julienne them real fine and we fry them as a garnish. So we're using the product completely. Because I'm told that you want to use in your garnish elements that are in the dish and you're, you're doing it beautifully. I, that looks like an egg wash to me. That, that is an egg wash that to help wash. seal the, the raviolis. And then here we have a dry sherry. This is kind of the key component to the sauce itself. Okay. So. And we'll finish with a little bit of parsley oil. So we just take parsley, um, typically about three bundles. We yes. pick all the leaves off. We then blanch them in boiling water, which refers to just dropping them in for about five seconds. Yes. And then we shock them in ice water. And we right. put them in a Thus blender. the bright green yes. color. We, we put them in the blender and we puree it. Um, and then we strain it so we get all the sediment out and we just have a bright green oil. And if we were doing this at home, we might be able to get another infused olive oil to oh, yeah. work with. Oh, yes. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. All right. So now we're going to assemble the ravioli. Yeah. And you're going to show me what I need to do here for that. The first part of this process is we're going to take the pasta dough. We want to lightly flour this so it doesn't stick to the roller as well as the roller itself. I think sometimes we get bashful with flour. And when we're working with raw dough, we shouldn't grab. Correct. No, correct. No, don't do that. 
So what I've already done with this is I've rolled this through three settings. So I've rolled it on the largest setting and a medium setting. Yes. We're gonna finish on the smallest setting. The reason being is it layers it down and it rolls it evenly. Because if you try to put it in the smallest setting We're and roll trouble. it, yeah, it starts crumbling and falls apart. And another thing that you mentioned when we were talking earlier is, is that after you had assembled this dough, you let it rest in the refrigerator for a while That's before correct. you even began doing this. That's correct. And so this, this part, as in with the rib filling, could be done the day before. Both of them, yes. Both of them. Actually up to about three days if, if you're really planning ahead. I wouldn't okay. go any longer than three okay. days. But. but a day or so ahead is perfectly fine. Okay, Chef, how do we do this? Okay, we're going to feed this in to our pasta roller. And once we get it started, it pretty yes. much does the work on its own. Do we have to so you're gonna hold that, yep, yes, you hold that there. It. And I can feel that this is still um, a little cool, but not warm. Correct. Which is key, the temperature is key here. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, gorgeous. Okay, so now it's gone through the thinnest setting and it is ready to be cut into ravioli. That is correct. And people do squiggly things or whatever. Yeah, you can do a ravioli just refers to anything that's really stuffed. So okay. you, you can come up with all kinds of creative shapes. But um, we're just we're, using We're circles. really doing a classical ravioli. Okay, classical ravioli for us. So I, as you see, I have two sizes of ravioli here. The purpose being is because once we put the filling on, the top layer of ravioli is going to need to be a little bit bigger so that it'll seam up properly and it'll look uniform. So this is going to be the bottom layer, the and smaller you, piece. And you wouldn't know that unless you'd a actually worked with product. Yeah, but, once you do them so much, it... it but that's it, the purpose of the show. Little secrets. Okay. okay. So we've just given that a little push. Yes. And we've given that a little push pull away this pasta. Now, we, normally we would cut all these and make raviolis, and then as you see the leftovers here, that's the part that I take in julienne and I fry up. Right, okay. And for the garnish. For the garnish, correct. Okay, so those guys are waiting. Now we're going to stuff our little ravi ravioli. And you know, an ice cream scoop is, is such a great tool for the kitchen because it always gives you a consistent amount and uh, just makes life easier. It, it, it makes things cook evenly as well, mm -hmm. and you don't realize that at Key. home. Things need Key to be issue. approximately the same size if you're going to cook them all at once. So what I'm going to do is one level scoop. I'm going to drop it right in the center of the ravioli there. May I put this on top? Do I put this we on top? To no, we have to do a little bit of egg wash Oh, here. we need our little glue. This is our glue. Um, as we're making this one fresh here, what I actually did as well is I made a couple right before you arrived because yes. this glue takes a little bit of time to dry. Uh, so you can't make the raviolis and then immediately put them in the boiling water because they'll fall apart. We would do that. Okay. We'll give this just a little push. One little push. And then we put its little top on and gently press. And yeah. What I typically uh, will I'm do. I'm going to want. Oh, yeah, you, you know, pull it together. Fine. I see what you do. I pull it up and I start on the opposing sides and I pinch there first. Okay. okay now we've got a stable start for the ravioli. Nothing's going to fall out. Yes. And then I just kind of walk it up the side here. Turn it around. And How cute is that? Walk it up really? the side there. And if you've got the right size ring molds, you can see these seamed up pretty well. See, and you would never know that those were two different size ring molds until we learned about it in the kitchen. All right, so then this needs to rest in the refrigerator for about how long before it gets to boiling water? It's 30 minutes is fine. And minutes. again, these can be made the day before as well. So just you like really, this? Yeah, oh, you can yeah. just make sure you wrap them tight so the pasta doesn't dry, dry out. out. Okay, all right, chef, we're gonna put this in the refrigerator and come back and boil our ravioli. Excellent. Okay, chef, the ravioli have been resting in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes, and now we're ready to boil them and make the sauce. What's the next steps? Well, the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the raviolis. Okay. So they're gonna take with fresh pasta approximately six minutes. Okay, so what we have is we have boiling water in the back. I'm gonna season this water with salt. And what ratio, because people say, oh, the water should taste like the sea. Do you want that much salt? You know, we don't. Course, these are stuff. So. We don't go that far with it. We do it just to slightly impart a little bit of flavor. Reason being, we spent all this time hand making the pasta and hand making the filling. Right. Um, to boil it in water without salt is actually kind of 
pulling the flavor out in a sense. So, so we're gonna infuse a little flavor here. All right, so it's boiling, it's been salted. The key is to actually make sure this water is boiling as okay. well. You do not wanna put the pasta in the water when it's only hot. What'll happen is these raviolis will stick together and they won't cook all the way. The filling not after all hot. this work, no. We're gonna do it right. Gorgeous ravioli. All right, so they're cooking, and in the six-ish six -ish minutes it's going to take for that, we will actually be able to make our sauce happen? That's correct. Okay, so you've heated the pan. I it, see that. It is About what heat would you? Medium, medium high? Um, if you're cooking at home, yeah, medium to high. The reason being is oh, we want high. to caramelize these mushrooms. Okay. Then I'll talk about that once we put them in. Okay. So this what is... What kind of oil? This is actually a blend of olive oil, and we use a little clarified butter here as well. Um, can't you really know, buy clarified I, butter, I but... You got, you got to do it. Yeah, and you yeah, know what? You don't it. need that much butter, but the flavor is amazing. And of course, you've increased the, the, the point at which it starts burning by making it clarified. So there we go. Smart now, point. the pan has been preheated. What we want to look for, a lot of people say wait till it starts smoking. What do you well, say? Well, the smoke is actually the oil starting to burn. So we don't want to go quite that far. We're looking for ripples. I okay? see. When we it's pull sort it, of you kind of see the line. ripples come yes. down the pan. Yes. That's when you know that this is ready. Okay. Okay. So we'll All start right. with so our shallots. The first one going in is the shallots. And they have such wonderful flavor. I always say it's somewhere between garlic and onion or something. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, yeah. It's, it does kind of have a, yeah. a unique taste. We'll go with the mushrooms next. Again, this is a blend of portobellos, um, button mushrooms, and oyster mushrooms. Now, the key to making this sauce successful, Yes. again, a little bit of seasoning. We want to season in layers. And what in... I see salt and pepper here. Salt and pepper. Yeah. Is it kosher salt? It is, it is. Good. And fresh cracked, I know all that, pepper. So we've spread this out and we want to let it sit. We don't want to sit here and stir this I as it cooks. I have to tell you something. This is, a, this is a common challenge for foodies. And that is, if it's in the pan, I must, I should be touching it. I should be moving it. And you just don't get the opportunity for the product to caramelize if you're moving it. That's correct. So don't play with your food. That's correct. Yes. So now we can kind of take a look at our raviolis just to make sure they didn't stick together. So I like to use a little basket, but you can see those are floating oh, as well. So much just easier. Fire. You know, and a lot of pots come with those as you call it, baskets or steamers or whatever, and, and it's easy enough to manage that way. Okay, so now we have our mushrooms. You can see they're starting to turn brown yes. around the edges. That's what we're looking for. We want that color, we want that caramelization. And onions as well. Yep. Yes. So I give them just a little bit of a stir. Now, for those of us who aren't great at the sauteing process, May I suggest a spatula and just move it around with that. That works well. Because otherwise, I got to tell you, it doesn't always end up in the pan when I do that. So, okay, but we've, we've now just moved it. Now what's going in? Okay, this is dry sherry. This is really the key ingredient to making this sauce work with the ravioli. Okay. What I want to do is I want to pull it away from the heat. Okay. We're going to deglaze with about an ounce. Yes. Give it a shake around. And if your temperature is proper, you will see there's just a little bit left in the pan. Most of it is yeah. already evaporating. Okay. okay. Now we're ready for the heavy cream. Okay. Okay, again, this is approximately two ounces, just enough to fill the bottom of the pan. Mm -hmm. And we'll throw in just a little bit of butter. And this will need one more seasoning right, right now. Mm -hmm. So if you notice earlier, I seasoned lightly because we want to do notice. it in layers. We don't want to put too much seasoning in there. And I notice you're not really touching it much right no, now. So, so the sherry was done off the flame. We don't want to start a forest fire in the kitchen. And then when there was still some left, you put it back on, you added the cream and butter and seasoning, and you're again not touching it. Not at all. Now what we can do is we can start to, again, you can use pear tongs or whisk if you would like. Yes. We can start to kind of shake this up to get the butter melting. And this is usually the stage we're all tasting to. And I'll just give it a little Please. try. Please, and we say this over and over again. You've simply got to taste as you go along. And you know a good kitchen when you see tasting spoons. Thank you. You're welcome. 
next to about there. As soon as oh, that wow. butter melts out, it should be nice and, and remembering sweet. that this is a sauce, not to be eaten by itself, so it's a complement to. So the seasoning's just a kick up, which is oh, that is magnificent. And we will shut the heat off. The sauce is ready. The that is magnificent. have been boiling for about six, maybe yes. seven minutes. Yes. So we can pull these out. So, Chef, would you say we're ready to plate? I think we are. Okay, we're going to plate. Chef, we eat with our eyes first. That's correct. Yes. Look at this, and this is the canvas for your artwork. Look at the shape of this plate. How fun, how much fun this is. So what we're going to do, we have three raviolis here. So we will just place them side by side. Give that sauce a little shake. Get all those mushrooms down in the sauce. Really, this just took minutes to do once you had the stuffing and the ravioli put together. Set that to Absolutely the side. Absolutely gorgeous. And as I said earlier, this yes. is a little grana padana. You can yes. use any Parmesan. Yes. I really like a firm Parmesan. For this. So you have shaved it. I've shaved, shaved this it with like, a peeler, actually. Like a, a vegetable peeler. Yep. A vegetable peeler. And so it's going on to the warm product. Sprinkle that on. Yes. Just like that. And then lastly, we're going to finish with the leftover fried pasta. Mm -hmm. And to do that, it was the leftover pasta. You just threw it into I hot th I threw hot it into oil. our deep fryer. You need to be oil somewhere around 350 degrees. Okay. And it only takes a couple seconds. Chef, thank you for this beautiful creation. We're going to pair it with, oh, yeah. final touch, the parsley infused olive oil. Okay, thank you. We are going to go to the bar. We're going to pair this dish with wine, and then we're going to invite our celebrity taster in to taste the, your efforts. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rapikoff, and this week we are in the kitchen at Trezo Vino with their executive chef, Daniel White. We have prepared one of their winter signature dishes. It is a mushroom ravioli in a sauce of cream and sherry. What to drink with this dish? To answer that question, we're talking to their director of operations, Jeff Wiltfang. Jeff, what to drink? This, Bonnie, we're honored to have you here, and then this is going to be an honor as well. This is Paul Hobbs Pinot Noir. Mm. We are uh, one of the very few establishments in Kansas that has an, any inventory of this wine at all. It was ranked in the, uh, matter of fact, number six in the top 100 best wines of the year from Wine Spectator this year. And, well, uh, we would expect nothing left, less. A, I mean, Trezo Vino, treasure of wine, so. And tell us, so a Pinot Noir and this particular one, why? And Pinot Noirs are very versatile wines. Mm -hmm. They're very, uh, it's a little bit of a lighter style grape. The earthiness of a Pinot Noir and the mushrooms and the mushroom in the uh, mm -hmm. short rib ravioli just mm -hmm. make for a perfect combination. And I think that we'll see that here in just a moment. You know, but, we do have a celebrity taster coming in who's going to be the final word on this pairing, but we have utter confidence you've made the perfect selection. Yeah, this is, uh, this is going to be a pleasure, I assure you. So again, one of the few uh, establishments in the state of Kansas even. The inventory of any, any wine that is regarded by Wine Spectator or other uh, critics, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're very hard to buy, they're very hard to get. Uh, oh. And one of the one reasons our wine list is, is oh so goodness. respected is the fact that oh. our wine list, while it's not the biggest in Kansas City, has some of the most artfully selected wines in Kansas City. Have you been a part of that? Have been a part of it, <laughs> and, and it's been a pleasure to be a part of it. We have uh, uh, opportunities to try new wines every day, um, opportunities to try wines that not everyone else gets to try. This is, a, this is an establishment that a lot of the wine producers would like to have their wines available in. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's why uh, we're so proud of our wine list, is that opportunity. I will say when I've eaten here before that your servers take great care to help you with the selection of your wine pairings. And we are now going to go to our celebrity taster and ask that question. All right. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff. We have been in the kitchen at Tres Alvino preparing a signature dish. We've paired it with wine and now to taste. We've invited 
Brian Busby, Chief Meteorologist at KMBC. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So, you're so anxious that it's adding to the excitement to be yeah. our celebrity <laughs> taster. But first, Chef, would you, would you tell Brian, Brian with a Y, what we have uh, prepared for him? Well, what I've prepared for you today is actually a short rib ravioli, which is a little bit of Fontina cheese inside. And we have a mushroom sherry cream sauce. What you see on top is actually some of the leftover pasta that we julienne and fry mm, for a garnish, nice. add okay. a little bit of texture, little and crunch. some shaved grana padano or parmesan. Okay. And with with a cream sauce, you, when you pair the wine, you have to have something that can stand up to it. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. And the director of operations has done that very thing. It okay. is a Paul Hobbs Pinot Noir. He had to get permission to open this wine. I'm just pouring here and I'm making a mess. You can tell I'm not used to doing this, but this is part of what you're to do. You have to taste this, but first taste the food. Okay. May taste. I help serve? Please. Okay. This is a shared plate, which is one of the concepts that they promote here at Trezo Vino, and that is to share. Okay. Well, we like share. that idea, don't sure we? Sure we do. Absolutely. Okay. Part of this. So you want me to try the food first I before? Think so. All right. Yeah. So you get the flavors in. All right. See, I'm not bashful about any. It's mm. never been an issue for me. Okay. Chef, this is the moment go. of truth here. I'm a little nervous. I know. You don't need to be. I mm. Is mm. that amazing? Pasta's al dente. Cream Homemade. sauce. Homemade. Really? Homemade. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, sauce is light, although it's mm. cream-based. And, well, I gotta go for the wine. Oh, no, you do. That's amazing. I just tasted the wow. sauce. And and with the the, the pasta, oh, the crunch. I mean it is a there's a contrast of crunch and soft and and a little heavy, but the wine really stands up to it. And as I say, the cream sauce is not heavy in in like you traditionally think of right. cream sauce. It is heavy in density, maybe in texture, but it's not heavy going down. This oh, is good stuff. Goodness. Well, thank you very much. Now wait until I actually get the rib. <laughs> you know, that was just the outside. Get the meat in there. Oh my Absolutely. goodness. Don't be afraid to spoon a little more sauce on there as well. Hmm. Brian, mm -hmm. bashful person that you are. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. I know. That's amazing. That is great for it. Um, you know. How long did you braise it? Uh, it's about two and a half hours. We actually braise it in a reduction mm -hmm. of veal stock or broth and mm -hmm. blackberries. Blackberries? You wouldn't great. have guessed that, would you? No. 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 That is amazing. This is one of the most obnoxious pieces of food I've ever had in my life. That's why I think, can you make a second? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I don't know if this one's right. You know, it's, it's, oh, you want to make sure by tasting yeah, exactly. some more. So, I see. Mm -hmm. I'm on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, this is good stuff. This is amazing. Have and, you ever had fried pasta? No, never. I hadn't either. So we say you like to garnish the dish with some of the ingredients that are part of the dish, mm -hmm. and he has done that. Is that just so yummy? Three kinds of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. You've got great depth of flavor here, mm -hmm. but there's no substitute for homemade pasta. No, no that's, there's that's no substitute. You can't it. achieve this with a dried out. No. no, no, no. And the wine works for you. Wine always works for me, but well, in this I mean, case, this it really does. Wine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> See, you got to ask your questions more specific. You know, I'm working on it, okay. especially with you. It's you're very demanding. So yeah. this Pinot Noir with this. Mm -hmm. And for a diva like yourself, a diva. this yeah. should be good too. This is, you know, it's because l'chaim to life. Yes. Um, so that's versatile. Mm -hmm. It's bold, but not overpowering. Mm -hmm. No. No. I think you should eat and drink some more. You know, I think I will. <laughs> if you thank, insist. Thank you so much Thanks for, for taking me. time out. I know you have a very hectic schedule. We appreciate your being with us. But what you oh, see here, here we go. on my Blackberry here is we go. Mm -hmm. I've blotted out the next three hours. So <laughs> <laughs> no we have deal. to make a lot of wine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. You're a sweetie. Appreciate it.